right so let us start um oh it's already 40 minutes um okay so um let's start with this chapter which is chapter six learning best practices for model evaluation and hyperparameter tuning so before we go on on the chapter i try to um you know recap or um go on to what is the meaning of model evaluation what is the meaning of hyperparameter tuning so hyperparameter so in machine learning we have two different kind of um, thing you will be hearing and it is good to um you know um, understand them beforehand where we um you know get more details so uh, what is hyperparameter so remember in machine learning uh, we saw in uh uh, our scikit learn uh, classifications that we have seen, uh, we set some parameters that uh, before we start training our machine learning model. So those kind of parameters are what we call hyperparameter. So you can see a hyperparameter is a machine learning parameter whose value is chosen before a training learning a before learning algorithm uh, is trained on. So that's called hyperparameter. And uh, example of hyperparameter, if we talk about deep learning, um, you can see we have, I mean, you know, remember we talk about number of epoch, learning rate, number of, you know, if decision tree, we select number of branches, pooling size, batch, all of these, they are called hyperparameter. Anything that you set before you start training your machine learning model is called hyperparameter. And if you remember, um, uh, for example, uh, this is the implementation of um, SBM, right? And you remember in SBM, we select some uh, hyperparameter like gamma, like C, you know, um, all these are called hyperparameter because we select them before we um, train our model, right? So if you remember like in our chapter three, where we did classification, for example, this is for logistic regression, where you can see we set some parameter, number of iteration, you know? So all these values that we select are called hyperparameters so you set them before you train your machine learning model now the hyperparameters they differ from different algorithms so that's the one we saw is hyperparameter for example logistic regression if we look at maybe sbm support vector machine it has different hyperparameter for example you can see you have c again um you know um yeah so that's what we call hyperparameter this is sbc Yep. Now, what, what is parameters? So parameters, on the other hand, are internal to the model. These are what we learn after we train the model. So we use the hyperparameter to train a model. And now what we get out is refers to as parameters. So at the end of the learning process, model parameters are what constitutes the model itself. So we will see uh, some of the example of um, parameters. Um, okay. Oh, I have an example here where I put some of the example of parameters. Uh, okay. So some of the example of parameters, they include well, model weight, right? Uh, yeah, so they include model weight and um, other stuff. So this one, this example, I intend is doesn't need to come here. Maybe it should come here. And um, pa, 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 pa. yeah, so these are basically what um, hyperparameter is. So hyperparameter, these are just some kind of uh, stuff that we say it before we teach our machine learning, and the machine learning uses these hyperparameters, uh, this hyperparameter stuff to actually make, for example, a, a good prediction and stuff like that. Um, having said that, then parameters are something that the model learn from using the hyperparameters. And we have from the chapter, you can see it's called hyperparameter tuning, meaning those parameters that we select, hyperparameter we select, the other one that constitute and give us the base parameters. So, for example, for the weight of machine of um, your model training, after you train your model, you're gonna have some parameters. So, if you select 
worst parameter, hyperparameter, then your model will not perform well. So now how best are you going to select hyperparameters so that you're going to have like, you know, good weight, good parameters at the end of the model training? That is what is called hyperparameter tuning. That is tuning means selecting you, for example, train test split is also hyperparameter because sometimes you may select, um, you're given a data set, you select like 90% training data, 10% test data, and the model doesn't work. Now you change from 90% training to maybe 80% training data, 20% test data. The model doesn't work. You change 70% training and 30% test data. And now the model works. So this kind of changing is what we call hyperparameter tuning. So uh, you can see setting the right hyperparameter values in, is very important because it directs the impact of the performance of the model that which will result from being used more, uh, during the model training. So the process of choosing the base hyperparameter of your model is called hyperparameter tuning. And this chapter is about hyperparameter tuning and model evaluation. So that is the topic you can see learning best practice for model evaluation and hyperparameter tuning so let's look at what is even more model evaluation so model evaluation is the process of using different evaluation metrics to understand a machine learning model performance as well it is strength and weakness so model evaluation so for example to evaluate something if you do exams and you're going to be evaluated and see what is your performance whether you score a b c d now this is also to satisfy the same thing when we talk about model evaluation, choosing using different parameters, I mean, um, using different metrics to evaluate the performance of that metric of that model. So that is basically about this chapter. Um, Hello. Yes. Hello. I'm sorry, Doctor. Hello. Again, uh, in I come by the cage ever. Come, is talking to someone else. I'm talking uh. to someone on call. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Check me. So, that is what we call hyperparameter tuning or model evaluation. So, selecting different metrics to evaluate the performance. Also. So, that is what it's all about this chapter learning best practice for model evaluation and hyperparameter tuning. So we say in, in, in a nutshell, hyperparameters, these are parameters we set for our machine learning algorithm before we train so that it can learn better. So for example, here we said some of the hyperparameter uh, like for this SBM support banker machine, uh, these, these are some of the hyperparameter. You select, you put them before, you, then you train your machine learning. If it doesn't work, you change the value here, you change it. Now, the, um, that is hyperparameter. And parameters, it means some of the, uh, after you train your machine learning models, what your model learns is called, high, uh, is, are called parameters of the model. So example, the weight of the model. So for example, if you look at deep learning, when we train a model, there is something at the end word that we use, which are called weights, weight of the model. When you train that weights, that, that weights are what the model learns and that are called the parameters. So you can see like, you need to set a good hyperparameter before you get a good parameters. And now the way to actually select best hyperparameter is called hyperparameter tuning and model evaluation, as I said. So that's a bit about it. Any question or anyone wants to ask something about, or about um, hyperparameter parameters and model evaluation? Any question? Any question? Oh, no question. Doctor. Yes. She hyperparameter tuning. Is there any criteria for the just trial yeah. by error? Yeah, so that's the, so that's what we're gonna see in the chapter. This chapter is all about. So this is what we're gonna see. Just I introduce what the, those, those these terms means before we go in. So um it's trial, there are trial and errors, and there are best way to select. So look at it, learning best practices. Can you see that? Learning best practices. So how, what are the best practices to select this uh, stuff? So this is what the chapter is all about. So let's go on and see what it is. So previous chapter, um, if you remember in previous chapter, what, chapter one, we talk about how um, the machine can learn. Chapter two, we uh, do it like training machine learning for classification. 
chapter three, we go through top machine learning set, uh, classifiers. Um, chapter four, building a good training data set. Chapter five, compressing uh, machine learning via what is called dimensionality reduction. So you can see here, we all learn some bits about machine learning. Um, but the, the, the thing is, how can we uh, all put this stuff into practice? Like, how can you compress your mod, uh, your data before? How can you know all those stuff? So today, um, it's time to like to learn the best practice to put all this together to fine tune the uh, your algorithm and evaluate its performance. So let's first introduce what is called uh, streamlining workflows with pipeline. Um, so the first thing we will look at is um, something that is so good in uh, scikit learn that actually uh, makes the workflow, the pipeline, uh, the workflow for training a model uh, efficient. Now and we're gonna start with using um, uh, um, um, this data set um, for cancer data set. And the, the data set um, is this. Um, um, let me see this. Uh, Okay, so this is the data set. Um, if we look at the data, uh, we can see that um, um, the data has like um, uh, how many columns? 32 columns. And the data has how many rows here? Five, because we just take the head, right? Because the head gave us the first five. Now, if you look at this one here, before reading the data, we already said head is known. Remember, we don't need the... Uh, you know, the column's name, right? So what happened if I um, put uh, didn't put the head is known? Um, uh, you can see like there are some, you know, uh, stuff here. Um, now putting this header, non remove the uh, header, just give us um, about our data set. Um, so now we want to use this data to uh, train a machine learning model now. Now, given your data set always, as we said, and uh, try to find what the data looks like. So for example, we can look at this shape. So it, this telling you it has um, how many rows? 569 and has how many columns? 32 columns. Now, uh, who can tell us like, how can we look at the, you know, this data set? How can we look at the, uh, some of kind of, um, what can we use in Python or Pandas to show more information about this data set? What can we do? You know, in if you are doing machine learning, you need to do, before you start looking at your, in your data, you need to do some kind of show the structure, like how many columns you have, how many categorical variables you have, how many, what can, who can tell, help us, what can we do? I think we can use describe. Okay, describe. This like this, like this for a loop. What happened? Uh, Mama dot df. Okay. Hmm. Ah. Uh, so. So we have what is called describe function. Here you look at it here. Um, it's a pandas function that basically shows you a lot of statistics. So you can see here, if we have this, um, it will show you like the count. Um, this is a series. It show you the unique, the top, the frequency. But what about if we have a um, data frame? So you can see here we have a data frame. It will show you like the mean, the standard deviation, the, you know, the percentile. So this is um, describe function that does that. Um, so if we look at this, I'm um, trying to find the describe function here. Um, this, um, we're gonna get some kind of uh, information. So you can see here, we have the count, we have mean, we have standard deviation, you know, all this may tell you the, um, uh, some information about your data set. Uh, one interesting information I will try to look at is what is the uh, minimum number here? Um, uh, so if you look at the, the minimum, minimum, minimum. So minimum in this, for example, column, now I'm putting this, you know, this is the minimum. Here you can look at the minimum in this column, right? Look at zero, zero, zero in this column. Look at zero, zero in this column. But look at this, what is the maximum in the columns? So this column where we have, for example, even zero, what is the maximum value here? Uh, we can see this, you know, so you can see like here column the maximum, look at the maximum here, 
look at the maximum here. Uh, look at the um, you know um, maximum as well here. So one thing we should know is that um, this data is somehow not normalized. So because you can see like some point at zero point zero in this column, the zero zero, um, but some data is like in hundred, right? In hundred. So it means we need to do some stuff before we train our machine learning model on this data to normalize it. So let's look at, um, um, so this is the data. Um, so what this data is about, the first two columns in the data set store in unique ID numbers, this is the unique ID of this and the corresponding diagonals is malignant and benign. So this is telling you that this is malignant, this is the class. So given all these features, we want to predict whether somebody is malignant, has a malignant tumor or benign. So that is what this is. So if we look at this one here, taking up the about the second column. So here I take this column. Can you see this column? DF, I say all the rows, but uh, give me the second, this column. So you can see this is malignant, malignant, benign, benign. Can you see that? But how many malignant and benign do, ha do I have from the data set? So you can see here, I can wrap this one. I, I can say value counts, like to count the values of each one. When I run this one, it will give me benign. I have these guys, I'm uh, malignant, I have this number, right? So this is telling us that um, um, we want to train a machine learning model where we have all these features, but we want to predict whether the um, uh, prediction, whether it is malignant or benign. That is about the data set. Um, so before we proceed, we know that all these features are numerical, but our prediction, which is called target variable, is in categorical value. What do you expect we're going to do before we proceed? Who can volunteer to tell us? Um, this is some, who can tell us? Um, you can see that our target variable is, uh, we have M, which says it's malignant. We have um, B9, which says it's benign, but they are categorical, you know, but what do you think we need to do before we proceed and turn our machine learning model? Who can tell us? Um, I think we need to change them to. Okay. We need to what? To change them to convert them into zeros and ones. Or yes. So why do we change it? Convert them to zero and one. Level and coding. Yes, exactly. Good. Great. So this is what we did last, I think. Yeah. So if you are training a machine learning model, if you are tag variable at these like um, levels, this uh, in categorical, so we need to change them using level encoding. Excellent. So you see, we need to change them into level encoding, but also here, who can volunteer to tell us like the values are a different range. What can we do before we train our machine learning model? What can we do before we train our machine learning model? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, we need to, yeah, we need to scale the data so that it is in the same scale, right? So that's what we're going to do. So that's when, we, before we move into the machine learning, what do we need to do? That's the, what you have the answer. So let's do the first one, which is level encoding. That is to encode the categorical value. So we import level encoder, right? So here you can see I take the first column to be, no, no, no uh all the rows so this one what will this give me so this guy you can see i see all the rows but the, from the second column to the end meaning um take this data from here to the end that is our future um set right so that's what i'm I, and i assign it to x y that is the target value right which is this guy so here i say y is um all the rows only select one column. So if you look at this guy, why is only this column, this column? Only we are selecting only this column, right? So this is pandas, uh, as you know. So you can see here, this column, which is why, um, this column, which is why, um, after we run it, um, if, we, if we look at this column, this why, we can see it is only MM and BB, like malignant and benign, malignant, but we cannot train our machine learning model with this, right? So you can train some machine learning, but it's data to change these um, levels into zero and one. That is what we're gonna do. So this is, um, we um, create a level encoder, we create an object called level, and now we 
call this object and fit transform on our level, which is this um, B and Y. Can you see that? So now Y has now been fit into uh, the new Y. This Y is not the same as the previous Y. So now when training this, it has now been fit. So um, let's look at the new value of Y now. If we look at the, can you see Y now turns into one and zeros? Can you see that? But before you know, uh, our Y is this, can you see how that is M, 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 and B. M, 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 now M is one and B is zero. So now we change our one, um, MM to be one from zero. This is what we call um, uh, level encoding that you, you need to change your category variable to um, numerical variable. So that is it. Um, anyone with question before we move on? Anyone with question? Okay, so now we change our, that the next thing is uh, we're gonna do um, what is called um, um, dividing the data set, right? So we're gonna divide from circuit land train test split. We have X train, X train, X test, Y, you know, we all know this. Um, remember in Python, if you are going to the next line, you can use this, you know, it donate, you're going to the last line, right? Uh, but I can just, you know, this is somehow we, um, people write the, um, because it's look somehow intuitive to, but I can just, um, you know, just write this guy in a single line to be like this, uh, to be like this. Can you see that? I can just say, but um, people, you know, the convention, they use something like this so that it, uh, people know what you're doing. Uh, so now we divide our data set, train side, test side is 20, and we use the stratify and we run them across one. So stratify ensure that you have equal distribution of the classes in each uh, value. So if I have, um, uh, uh, it makes sure that if I have like um, uh, B920, then it makes sure that uh, each of these has equal distribution. That is why stratify. Now let's look at the data frame now, X train. So you can see now we have this, let's look at that. So this is our X train now. Um, yeah, so we have to divide our data set. But before we move in, uh, we, all, we, all, we also say that we need to uh, scale our data, meaning we need to change them into equal scale, right? So that's what we're gonna do to scale the data. Okay. Um, before I showed us, um, um, what we're gonna see in this, which is combining transformers and estimators. Let's train a machine learning model without um, X meters and uh, with, uh, without using what is called pipeline. So let's, let's look at this. So I wanna use logistic regression to train this data set to predict whether something is malignant or not. I want to just use logistic regression. Now I say from scikit-learn.matrix import F1 score, accuracy score, recall score, confusion metric, AUC, rock cap. These are all metrics that are used to for machine learning model. Um, we have not come some of them, but I'm just using them. Uh, we will come to it to them um, at the end of the chapter. So uh, they are they are used to find the accuracy or uh, how good your model is. Now here you can see I import my logistic regression, my PCA to do dimensionality regression, you know, test split and standard scalar for scaling. Now, as I said, this data need to be scaled before we train the machine learning model, meaning we need to uh, put it in the same scale, right? So here you can see we, um, you know, uh, we create an object standard scalar, and now this object standard scalar, uh, I now fit transform on my trend data. Can you see that? And now after I fit and transform on my training data, now I um, I call the, that new variable that have been transformed into scale X train. And now for the test data, I don't use fit transform. You only use transform. So you, 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 this is very important. Here we use, remember, fit transform. Here we use only transform on text data. Why is this? So because the model is learning on training data, that is why it is called fit transform. So it learn whatsoever, and here it in test data uses. So this is, in this case, we now scale our data sets 
to basically um to uh zero to i mean some kind of uh classes so if you look at the data now uh this is it so you can see they are all now they are not even like uh, in this uh, very large where you see we have 120 138 you know one um you know yeah this kind of huge values uh there are no more in the data so you can see here we only where we have is you can see minus zero i, I think the best the big uh largest value i can see i can see three somewhere else i think uh yeah this so you can see they are within the scope, right? They are not that far. So that we scale it. But let's assume we want to also, because this data has like 32 columns, it means, um, as we discussed last week, um, that having data with many features may not actually, uh, um, uh, actually give a better performance. Uh, sometimes what we do, we do PCA to reduce the number of features, right? So let's assume we want to reduce the features. Now, how can we do that? So your new training data and X, uh, 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 and training data have been scaled. So I'm going to use these scaled versions, not the original XN and SN, to do what we call P, um, to do the uh, the PCA. So here you can see I have how many features. Um, let me do this. So XN, uh, let me do this. XN PD dot data frame. So you can see how many features do I have? Um, you can see I have 30 columns, right? I have 30 columns. So I want to do features um, PCA. Now, the next thing after scaling, now we can do PCA. How can you do PCA? We discussed this last week. We create now a PCA object using number of component panel two, right? Now, the same thing here in where we do scaling, you fit transform and now transform. So you can see here the object PCA X, can you hear I say, I call it scale. So PCAX will fit transform on scale train on this data set that we already scale. The reason why I will not do on XN original because I changed the original now, I already scaled it, so I need to use the scale version. Now, I also, for the test set, I need to use this uh, scale so you can see I fit transform. So now I have now my new data set that I will train my machine learning model is PCA train and PCA test. This is the data that I will train my machine learning model. Now you can see I now um, create a classifier logistic regression. I use some kind of um, um, uh, random study and now fit on X train, uh, PCA train, and uh, PCA uh, uh, PCA train and uh, Y train here. Um, yeah, white trend. So here, remember, we don't um, transform our target value, right? We don't transform our target. We only transform and fit our training data, not the target, because the target is something in the real world that you always see it the way it is. So you don't touch it. So here, that's why I have white trend. So, but um, um, uh, since I train my model, I can now make prediction on uh, uh, test data, right? I can now make prediction on test data. So here is my X and X set. And now I can do um, other, uh, uh, if I run this, I can record, um, report some confusion metrics, F1 score, accuracy, and recall. These are some stuff that we will see later. But just to show you, uh, the interest here is just to show you like, if you want to do two transformation, you need to do some kind of level. You need to do first one again. You need to do another one. What if you want to do 10 transformation? So I need to do another one here. I need to do another one here. I need to do another one here before I go and train my machine learning class. Right? So you need to follow, do some presentation. So what, um, what actually remove the burden to do this stuff, circuit line bring what is called pipeline. So this is what we're gonna see, a pipeline. So let me show you the pipeline. So if you want to use pipeline is this, you import what is called pipeline. Now, if I import a pipeline, I need to create an object called pipeline first. This object, what it will take, it will take all this pre-processing, this step, and it will take the final, it will take your estimator, meaning machine learning algorithm. Now you can see here, I said, okay, 
five pipeline. You can see the first one here is capital. Now here I say scalar, standard scalar. So here you can see, what did I do here? I did this guy, standard scalar, right? I do for scaling our data set. So here I name it, I give it a name. You can see here is a somehow tuple. You create a tuple. This is a tuple with the name of the thing you want to do and put the uh, function, which is standard scalar. Then the next one is I do PCA. Now you can put PCA here. PCA, and now you put the name of the PCA. Now the last thing I do is to create, um, to train the model using what is called, using logistic regression, right? So I can just put this one uh, here, LR, logistic regression, and now put the name of the my algorithm, uh, which is estimator, logistic regression. So this is how it does pipeline. You put your transformers, why do I call these transformers? Because they transform your data from one format to another. For example, the first one, it scaled the data to some scale. The second one, it transformed the data from um, 30, to, from 30 futures to number of, to two futures. Can you see that number of component only? So it means here, if you if I do take this guy and this guy PCA extend and I uh, try it here. Can you see I have only two features? It means now I transform the data. That is why these guys are called transformers. And this guy is because um, you can see here, uh, you, you, we fit, uh, um, we fit. Uh, remember, this is uh, one way to fit transform, um, to fit your model. You train the model. Uh, so anybody, uh, everybody knows why we do this at two different, uh, at one single line. Because let me show you um, the difference. Uh, maybe some of you might forget this. Uh, uh, yeah. Look at this, for example. Here, I'm, I'm training a KNRS neighbor algorithm. I create my object called KNN, KNRS neighbor. Can you see that? Now, I, at the same time, I call KNN and I call fit on it. Now, these two steps, you can do that in a single step. How can you do that? You can say, okay, um, KNN, you keep this um, number of two. Let me put it this as previous. So you can see here, I create an object. Now, instead for you to do, you can fit it again. The same, you can fit. You can call the fit method on this guy. And now you can uh, use this. So instead of using these two lines, you can use this. Create all the object at the same time and fit it. So there are different ways to do this. So that's why here you can see we create a, a classifier and now we fit it here, right? So here we don't need to do that. We can just put the name of the classifier. Now, when you run this, what the pipeline will do, it will first, given the data set, it will transform it using standard scalar. It will now use the uh, perform PCA and now it will um, do uh, training and also fit the method at the and do that. That is what pipeline does. So you can see here, we do the number of the code, the lines, you know, all these steps. You can see this one, um, we reduce this to a single line. So this is called a pipeline. So uh, this pipeline, we can use it now to fit and predict, you know. So this is the pipeline, five method. We can fit on X train and Y train. So here we can fit, that is we train the model. Um, and now we can do prediction on tests, and now we can also uh, calculate the score. So if we run this guy, we can see here we have 0 0.965 of training our um, logistic regression on this data set. So we can see here, training a logistic regression to predict um, whether something using accuracy give us 95% accuracy. Um, yeah, any question before we move on? I'm just talking, ask question before we move on. Ask question, any question. And you can put as many as possible transformers here. I can put 10 transformers. And now what makes it different is that the last one must be your estimator, the algorithm one, the last one. So if you come here, uh, there's, okay, we will we'll do that. Any question before we move on? Okay, so just to recap, um, 
we fit on training data, right? Xn and Y train. Remember always we pre we fit on training data. And now we do prediction. Uh, this object pipe has a predict function. We do prediction on test data. We already know this. So here, uh, remember what we do is uh, we train the model, train the model on the training data. Training data. Well, that is X train and Y train. Now here we predict. We do a prediction on test data, right? Test data. Um, you predict what the classes. And now here we want to find the score, um, the accuracy. So you need to give like X test and Y test. That will calculate the score of your model. So here you can see I'm printing the um, the score, which is basically now you can see print test accuracy, um, uh, test accuracy, and yeah which is this test accuracy, I put it here, and now it gives me 0 0.956. Any question before we move on? And of course, if you look around this object pipe, if we run it, what we will see is you can see like, okay, this object pipe, it has standard scalar, it has PCA, it has logistic regression as the last one. Any question? That is training the model with pipeline. So we don't need to you know divide this, but to make it more simpler, why do we need to put this scalar? Uh, like, why don't we just say, okay, use standard scalar? We don't need to mention this. We don't need to say PCA. We don't. So this pipeline only allow you to name. You can name them. You can name this Kuma Dawson Dak Esa. One yena, one yena scaling, yena scaling, yena day data data, yena day data data, day data data. Can you see that? Anything you can just give it a name what you want. So it's just for you. Like when you run the, your model, you want to see. Uh, whatsoever in the pipeline when i run the pipeline i can see what this uh what i have here that is it but um scikit learn comes with another thing that makes this thing back better that you don't need to name your your steps so this is what is called make pipeline instead of pipeline now we are using what is called make pipeline so make pipeline this is a shorthand for the for the pipeline constructor it does not require and does not permit naming the estimators Wherever you see estimator means machine learning algorithm. Instead, their name will be set to the lower case. So let's look at it. The same problem. I use the same problem. I call simple imputer. So this simple imputer, remember. So here I'm adding another um, transformer, transformer, which simple imputer. Who can tell us what simple imputer does? We saw this one previously. Who can tell us? Yes, so what is it? What do you mean by data cleaning? What is it doing? Like we can we can remove some. We yes, remove okay. Some yes, so we for if we have missing value, we can use simply imputer maybe to do replacement or some stuff like that. So you can see here, I add another um, transformation, a, a, a standard scalar, our PC, and now logistic regression. So you can see this one um, is even more easier than this. Um, because like you don't need to name your everything here. Can you see that? And now the same thing as we saw here, the same this step, I put it here. It's only now we are using what is called make pipeline. Rather here we are using what is called pipeline. So if, if we run this guy, we will see that you can see 0 0.95 is the same result at this guy. And now when we run the, this object, make pipeline LR object, when we run it, you can see that it, it name our this, but it just you know use small letter, simple imputer, standard scalar in capital. It just name it standard scalar, PCA in capital. It just name it automatically without you using naming this. This is kada, this kada. Uh, Scikit learn make pipeline automatically name this stuff to be like small letters of the estimator there. Yeah. You can see the only difference is that make pipeline generate names for steps automatically, but steps names are needed. Um, but if step if you want to use the make pipeline with model selection utility, rhythm. okay. So sometimes, um, uh, why do you need some step um, pipeline? Uh, wh why do you need to use pipeline and when do you use make pipeline? So this is telling us that uh, sometimes you need to specify the mod the name of the model. For example, when you want to use what you call grid search cv which we'll see later we'll see what this means later so to summarize here you can see that the make pipeline function takes an arbitrary number of scikit-learn transformers 
So this take a bit any number of transformers. That can you know, a bit any transformers. Uh, even with the pipeline there we saw, um, followed by a circuit line X meter. But the thing is, the last one must be X meter machine learning algorithm. That is the main idea. If we call the fit method of pipeline, the data will be passed down um, a serial transformation bear pit and transform call on this. So when we call, when we create our object called pipeline LR, when we call fit now on this object, now what will happen is that um, it will call, um, uh, since in this method, they don't have pit, they have only transformers. So it will call transformers on the first three, but it will call fit on the training data on the last method. So this is what this guy is saying. Um, you can see if we call the fit method of the five of five line, the data will be passed down a series of transformer via fit and transform calls on this intermediate until it arrives at the estimator uh, object that is the final one. The estimator will then be fitted to the transforming data. So the transformer now will be fitted. And uh, yeah, the only thing that I want to say is that uh, uh, just remember that the last one must be at the estimator and the previous one must be. Uh, you are transformers. Yeah. Any question before we move on? Any question? Right. Um, what is this? Okay. So this is something from the book that shows us like uh, uh, what is happening um, using the pipeline stuff. We are, you know, fit, transform, fit, transform but then we do uh, fit. As we saw here, um, transform, transform, and the last one is fit, which is the estimator. Um, so yeah, any question again? Um, this is um, uh, something that I said um, there. Remember we talked about previously how we can use Categorical value variable. So here, I remember here, we just use um, standard scalar to scale the values because our data set is all, are all numerical value. We know they are all numerical value here. But what about if the data set is not all numerical value? Like, for example, you have some kind of a categorical value. Um, so instead, here, we use simply imputer to use a mean, to use some strategy mean, which is by default. If your data is um, uh, categorical, you can use constant to select some, you know, and you need to use some encoder, um, which we already discussed. Um, these are some of the pre-processing steps. So I put some kind of uh, um, um, an example here. If you read this, you will see how they use like a, a data set that has like column, which is variable and column, which is categorical to do some kind of stuff with the uh, pipeline. Um, I already pushed this one into GitHub. Um, you can have access to the um, to the network now. Okay, any question before we move on to the next one, which is cross validation? Any question? Okay, let's go on. So the next thing is you don't care for cross validation to assess model performance. Now we have seen. Um, the first thing is uh, make pipeline that makes it is easier to put all your um, all your transformers and you know uh, your uh, estimator in one scene. So the next thing is what we're going to see is cross k fold cross validation. So the common cross validation techniques uh, we have what is called hold out cross validation and k fold cross validation. Um, so but the main, yes. Yes, please. Doctor. Yes. And uh, the pipeline in the is uh, one way of doing the, I have a parameter tuning here. Okay, good question. So um, he's asking, is pipelining one way to make uh, to uh, parameter, hyperparameter tuning? So, um pipeline um uh the, we still we have come uh to the um where we are doing hyperparameter tuning this make pipeline is just a way that allows you to train your machine learning to make your uh, machine learning workflow so if you look at it 
the, the heading, what the heading says, and this. Um, combining transformers and estimators in a pipeline. So what this is just um, telling us, like how can we combine transformers and uh, estimators in a single pipeline? Streamlining workflow. So this is just giving you a workflow, like the best way to train, to use scikit-learn. This is not hyperparameter tuning. We will come to hyperparameter tuning. So as I gave an example, where here you follow this approach, you do this, you do this, you do scaling, you do PC. What about if you have like 10 hyper, high, 10 like uh, 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 estimators, um, I mean, transformers you want to do like, so you're gonna create this 10 times. So the workflow that is best used is to use pipeline or make pipeline. So here we are talking about the uh, pipeline. When we say like a uh, workflow, workflow, when we say workflow, it means like, uh, the approach that I mean, you know, that is smoother, you know, a streamlined, I don't know how to put it in, yeah, workflow, the, the best way to do some stuff. So this is um, this make pipeline. It's not parameter, hyperparameter tuning. We'll come to hyperparameter tuning later. I don't know if I answer your question correctly. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Um, so um, you can see here. Uh, one thing is like um, you, I can say here is my hyperparameter for the number of component is three. Um, you can see here you are tuning hyperparameter um, by selecting other stuff. But um, the main idea we'll talk about that hyperparameter later in the chapter. So yeah, so let's look at um, this K4 cross validation. So uh, you remember what we do basically to train given a data set, a single data set. Um, we have what is called hold out cross validation. So what is hold out? So hold out in a natural way is that given a complete training data set, you remove some stuff and train your machine learning in some subsection and now test its performance on this, what you hold out. That is why it is called hold out method. That is train your model on this train data and now test the performance on test. This is what is called hold out method that is used to train a machine learning model that is called hold out. Um, why do we use hold out? Why don't we just train a machine learning model on this data and train it as performance? Um, so an example, when you are teaching your children, uh, your student in your class, you ask, you teach them one plus one, they say two. You teach them one plus two, three. You teach them one plus uh, five, they say six. Now you teach them. Now when you want to test them in exam, you sometimes we don't give them one plus two, one plus three that we teach them. We now give them maybe 10 plus 20, right? So to tell if you give them 10 plus 20 and they said 30, then it means you evaluate them and they understand the concept. That is also the same thing. So you do buy some training, you train, you teach them, and now you do the exam on some sample that they, you have not trained them. This is called hold out method. Um, but this method has some kind of disadvantages. Because the problem in this method is that um, sometimes we want to use what is called model selection with this data, meaning I have five machine learning algorithms. So I train my machine learning model on this data set, and now I uh, fine tune on this, and now train another machine learning model on this, I fine tune on this, train up, train. So, there is what is the problem is that you are exposing the test data to those models because you train and you um, you train the model and you test on this training data. You see that the model doesn't perform well. You say, oh, let me change something. Okay, you change some parameter on this. And when you change it, you train the model and try, ah, it doesn't work. You change something small, you train. Now it means that you are training the model you are, you know, tuning the model based on the data set. It means the model will now will now will now be able to memorize the data set, the test set. So the, yeah, this is a problem. Um, however, in typical machine learning application, we are also interested in tuning and comparing different parameters, setting to further improve the performance for making prediction on unseen data. This process is called model selection, with the name referring to a given classification program for which we want to select optimal values for tuning. So you see here, um, when we want to select the best machine learning algorithm, what we do here is 
we'll try to select the best parameters that will give us the best performance here. So this means that this model, this test data is now being seen by your model. And the good scenario is that when you are training a model, don't let the model to see that data at all when you are doing training. Let the model, train the model all with on different data and now test the model on separate data that's not been seen during training. This gives us to a different kind of scenario, which is called a uh, um, um, uh, different scenario, uh, which is to separate the data into train, validation, and test data. So this is the train data, this is the validation data, and this is the test data. So you train your machine learning model, and now instead for you to try to see performance on set data, no, you keep this test data separate. Now this validation, you train the machine learning model and now try to see it on performance on validation data. If it doesn't work, now iterate here, iterate here, select the parameters, model. So this is called model tuning, hyperparameter tuning. Change the parameters here. Maybe you set your parameter C gamma is 0 0.1, change it and you know, change it, tune it. Tune means change a little bit, tune it, you know. So you change it, you change it. And now when you find the parameter that gives you best performance on validation set, then you are set. Then you go and you do test your final on test data. Don't show your model anything until you find the best hyperparameters. This is what we call hyperparameter tuning. In this step, trying to find the hyperparameters that um, your model works best on the validation data. Now you go and test your model. I don't know if um, any question. Any question? Okay, so for this, Doctor. yes. She on a testing data it will come from another set of uh, different data sets. No, okay, no. Because, one data um, set. If one you're doing a data set, you put it into training and testing. Hmm? Can, can you come Hello? again? Can you come again? Can you come again? Okay, I'm going to look at your testing data set. Mm. Yes, yes. In Ajinka, I'm going to be again. entirely another different data set. No, no, no. So if you have a single data set, can you look at it? Single data set, you have a single data set, only one. Yeah. Only one data set, you divide it into three classes. Training data set, validation data set, and training testing data set. Um, one way we do this is we do this 70, 10, 20. So 70% of the data, you can put it at training. 10% can be at validation. 20% can be at testing data. I don't know if this answers your question. This is just um, one of the um, default, some people use this stuff. Yeah, it's clear. Okay, any question again? Doctor. Yes. Uh, sometimes they tend to split the data set into training and testing. Training and testing, but? Only, yes, without this validation. Exactly, exactly. And this is what we have been using, if you remember, since from this book, we only use training and validation. And this is it. Training and validation. So we, here we have only one training data set. And we divide it into two, train and testing. All right. We train the model, model on this data, and we find it is performance, whether it's, it's generalized on test data. All right. But it seems. Okay. Hello. Yes, go on. It seems this uh, the validation is part of the testing 
data set because we don't want to divide it into 70, 30. Yeah, so. Um, and now comes the ratio, yeah. It's, yeah. It's yeah, like so, 70, 10, 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's still the same thing. Um, uh, what, what she's asking is like we use only, we divide our data set into training and test data. Yeah, from psychic line, we know that this is what it is. And still people use this concept, training and test data. If you look at what he says in the book, um, many people still use the test data set for model selection, which is not a good machine learning practice, right? Um, the problem is this. If we use the same test data set over and over again during model selection, it will become part of our training data and that model will be more likely to overfit. So there is problem if you use this approach, the model will overfit in the sense that uh, you use, you train the model, you predict, and now, um, for example, now I train my model and now do predict, test it on this date. I see that um, the model performance is 50%. It doesn't work well. Now I go back and now tune some parameters, you know, tune some parameters and now train the model again. It's 70%. I go back, tune the model. 80%, tune the model, 90%, tune the model, 100%, and now it overfit the data. Can you see that? So the, the best, the good performance, the good way is to do what is called training at Balisha. When you come to deep learning, especially, this is what we normally use in deep learning. So sometimes in machine learning, people still go ahead with this one, but if you we come to deep learning approach, this is the way to go um, because the model in deep learning is complex models. Um, they, are, they can overfit the data. So we don't even try to find performance. We only use this. So that is um, what uh, this is it. And also okay. there is a, um, okay. yes, go on. K, no, K stands for, for number of splits. Neko. Yes, was, we will come to that now in a bit. We will come to that in a bit. Okay. 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 Anyone with question again? Yeah, we're coming to say uh, one um, validation thing come up with uh, test data. Test data. Um, so this validation, given you are this training me, given you are hello, given you are data set, given you are data set, which is hundred percent, hundred percent, just to create training set test set, what you can do is just giving your data set is hundred percent. What you need to do is you want to create a training data, just check whatsoever it would like sixty percent of that, give it training set. Take twenty percent to be validation set. Take twenty percent to be test set. You can do that, provided your data set is like. Remember, this division is also dependent on how large your data set is. If I have like one hundred thousand data set point, then taking sixty percent, which is sixty thousand, twenty percent means twenty thousand for validation, twenty seven for tested is okay. Do you understand? But if you have small data set. Uh, this cannot work. So uh, you can go with uh, 60, um, 70, 70, 10. You can go with this, something like that. So this is like, a, there is no standard way that you divide the data. It's just like, an, uh, yeah. So you can see um, using the train here and validation, all this part is part of training. You are training your model, all this part, because you are, you, you are validating whether it is correct or not. After you finish this part, validation, then you go and do the testing on. After you finish training here completely, then you go and evaluate the model here. Okay, finally, you are talking. Go on. Okay, then I saw one and validation set is part of the test set. So, you have part of training the on in the Akiva Araba data into two portions a training set, a validation. Uh, set so the gun and the training set the key validation the chicken training set say I say I hyper parameter tuning hacker the she by anger base uh combination the AP so come out go ahead now the chicken training set say I train and uh one and then more than the gun and come say I 
Ya, ya bagi itu nampak kumas mungkin Tesla. Yeah, so we will see this. Um, so when you even do hyperparameter tuning, you select the high, um, the best hyperparameter. Um, this validation, you can see we um we have these guys only these guys for train the model. This train validation. Now when you train the model and you select the best hyperparameter, where you select the best hyperparameter to give you the test uh, to give you good performance this data. Now you go back and train the model on this data completely on the, you match the training and validation set now and train the model completely. After you do selection of the best hyperparameters, now you make your, yeah. So, um, so I, I just, I went to hard is, is um, um, okay. So there is also a problem here. One of the advantage of this hold out method is that it depends on how you divide your data. So for example, I have a data set and um, I have a data set like um, there were 1,000, right? And now um, like 700 of the data and now I have 100 and now I have 200, right? So you can see, you now divide this 700 for training, 100 for validation and 200 for testing. Now the problem is this, while you do the training, only these 700 are here, only 100 are here, but some data point are in this 700 may not be representative in 100. What I'm saying is that the division you do actually affect the performance of the machine learning model. Some of the points you have here, be, may not be representative as well here. So this is a problem. A key disadvantage of how um, is that performance estimate may, may be buried, sensitive to how we partition. So for example, now, if now I use this 700 and use like 100 for, now if I turn my division to be somehow like this, um, this one like to be 800, I select 800 for training, I select 100 for this and select 100 for testing. Now the performance here may be, may drop sometimes, we don't know, do you understand? So it means, it depends on how you are, I mean, you are doing your partition, um, or how you partition the data. Uh, maybe the samples that are not here are not representative here and this and stuff like that. So this is one of the disadvantage of um, the hold out method. Um, yeah, you can see like, uh, turn the, into the thing and validate. the the yes may be very different example of the data. So one of the solution is called careful cross validation um, that we'll see now in a bit. Any question before we move on, on this holdout? So what we have seen now in this method is that we have um, a way where we divide our training data in training set and test set um, and train model, but still people use this model, this approach, but um, there is a problem that the model may overfit. But the best approach, um, another approach is what we call um, um, uh, dividing the data. This is not the careful, uh, uh, it's still hold out method. This one, I put it wrongly here. Um, this is still a hold out method. So as I said, we have two methods, hold out cross validation and cross careful cross validation. This is hold out, meaning you divide the data, you hold something and you turn something. So here we hold, uh, divide into two, uh, this we divide into three. This is also hold out method, but you divide the data into three. Um, so we say that um, a key disadvantage of the hold method is that performance extent may vary, may be very sensitive. So on how we divide the data, uh, this is the main idea. Uh, how you divide the data may affect the performance. So this, the solution is what we call careful cross validation. Um, anyone with question before we go to careful cross validation? Do we have enough time, Doctor, for care faults? Oh, time has come, go? Yeah. Oh. oh. Because, uh, that is what I wanted to say, because yeah. so no, as a, for um, 10 minutes to Ah, right. So, um, energy, we can stop here, go, right? Yeah, that is. That yes, care. Yeah. yeah, OK. So, what is that? Yeah, so I think uh, we can stop here. And uh, tomorrow, we can continue with them. Um, for cross validation, um, we can continue on how we can use this uh, cross validation in Python to see 
how we can use this stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, we'll see like uh, debugging uh, algorithms, how you can use um, learning curve and stuff like that. Yeah. So any question before we go? Yeah, I have a question, but it is a little bit out of. Okay, go on, go on. So I'm running an, an experiment. Mm -hmm. I, I'm dealing as I'm, I, I'm using time series, although you said you didn't, you didn't have much idea about time series. Yeah, yeah. Go on, what go I'm, on. I'm doing is continuous bands. That mm -hmm. is my, I'm dealing with continuous bands. Yes. So I try, instead of me to find the accuracy, I prefer to find the mean squared error. Yes, exactly. If you are using regression, then you yeah. mean square. Yeah, yeah, it is a regression. That is, that, is, that is what I'm trying to, yeah. yeah. Is it more for me to you to find mean squared error? And after the training, I also try to find the mean absolute error. Yes, yes, yes. Predicted mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. between the predicted and the actual. Yes, predicted. yes. So if you are using classification, it is you, not have, you have different evaluation performance um, metrics, if you are using something that predicts numerical continuous value you have. So what you said, you are predicting numerical values, right? Exactly. So what you're going to use is RMSE, root mean square. Or, yeah, I have, or, I have used MS, yeah. uh, I use mean squared error. Mean square error, yes. Yeah. So and if uh, you, if your prediction is continuous value, that is what you're going to use. But here, what we are doing in this example is classification. So oh, I know. That is why I say it out, it's, out, it's out of what we have. No, no, yeah, it's still the something. It's still the something like, but the problem we are doing, they are, we, the, I think that we will be discussed those ones in the, I don't know whether in this chapter or in the next chapter, but they are still the something. Only the main idea you should know is that when you are prediction is classes, the matrix you're going to use to, to measure the performance of your algorithm is different if you are using uh, prediction that is regression. So if I'm predicting like uh, positive and negative sentiment, uh, 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 negative and positive sentiment, I'm going to use like uh, accuracy. I'm going to use maybe um, rock cap. I'm going to use maybe um, all this. Oh, I put all these parameters uh, uh, in this example here somewhere. These ones. Uh, in this. Okay. So look at this one. F1 score. Accuracy, recall, confusion metric, AUC, rock cap. If you are using classification, machine learning, if your machine learning is classified. Am I the only one not seeing your screen? Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Let me go back. Oh, sure. Can you see my screen now? Yes. yes. So if you are using classification, if it is classification, that is you are classifying something bad negative kokuma this is my line this is tumor this is not tumor for you yeah. to um find the performance of your algorithm these are some of the metrics we use f1 score accuracy one recall. i have used this uh, yeah roc yeah rock up. but if yes regression. if you are using regression that's you are predicting maybe the salary of university professor in nigeria you are predicting the salary maybe you can say is two million you see, uh, you are predicting the salary of assistant lecturer, Simon Ibarra, the South Korean salary in the So, I love my so you see, this is continuous value, right? So, if yeah. you use this, your matrix will be RMSE, will be root mean square, or MSE, uh, MSE or um, which one again? Uh, matrix or uh, um, um, regression. Yeah. Uh, or you can use mean absolute error. Absolute error. Mean absolute error. Yeah. Mean, use mean squared error and mean absolute error. Yeah. So these are the three. Number one, mean squared error. Mean square error. Number two, root mean square error. Number three, mean absolute error. These are the three things. So this is for regression problem continuous. For classification, we use um, F1 score and Y the name of Ghana. So um, yeah, you should know, we should all know this. Um, okay, the so sorry, I'm sorry, please, please, I'm sorry, but it is an, it is another question. Yes, go on, go on. Validation. Eh? In my case, 
in my case, it is related to validation. Okay. In my case, I have used Keras Tuna. You use what? I have used Keras Tuna. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So instead of me, it will, it will, it is hyperparameter tuning. Instead of me, it will try, it will, it will tune the parameter. Point. It is like advancement. Yeah, of I know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have used it instead for me. I just divide my data into training and uh, train, train set and test set. Mm -hmm. That is no condition because I have used Keras tuner at all. Yeah, it will, I understand. It will mm -hmm. the best, and it will it will have it will do the hyper parameter hyper parameter tuning for me and find and save the best model for me. So mm -hmm. in that case, is it okay since I didn't divide my data into three set, uh, test set validation and testing test sets? I have divided it into two. Yeah, trains so and. Uh, why, uh, and uh, test set. So, um, as you said, um, Keras Tuna is basically an easy and way for hyperparameter optimization frameworks, right? That yeah. you configure it to, you know, uh, that it select the best hyperparameters values for your model. Yeah. 